we'll see that as we're solving for this. All right, so let's solve this thing. We are looking for v of t. Okay, so that means that we want an equation that is in terms of v. Well, the equation that we were using before looks pretty good. All right, so let's stick with that. So we had v over 3. That is the current through this branch, right? Voltage divided by resistance gives us current. Plus current of the inductor, so I of L. Plus the current going through the capacitor, which is I of C. Equals 0. Alright, so now let's write these guys in terms of V. So we go check out our best friends. Well, I of the inductor is right here. Uh, 1 over L times the integral of V. And I of the capacitor is over here. C times dV on dt. Notice they both give us an expression in terms of V. Our equation becomes V over 3 plus 1 over L times the integral of V plus C dV on dt. This is equal to 0. So let's take the derivative of this entire thing so that it's a second order differential equation. Prime this, prime this, so this will be one third dV on dt plus one over L times V plus C times the second derivative of the voltage over time. This is all equal to zero. Now if we rearrange the equation, we shall get C dV on dt, the second derivative, plus one third dV on dt, plus one over L times V equals zero. And remember that our inductance was 1 Henry, so this is just 1 over, 1 over 1. So we can just get rid of that and assume that that is a 1. And then same thing for the capacitance. The capacitance is 1 Henry, so that's just an invisible 1. Okay, so now to solve this, we rely on the skills we picked up in... Uh, differential equations right so the quick way to solve this is just you replace the dv's with s's All right so this is going to be s squared plus one third s plus one it's going to equal zero so to solve for s we can use the quadratic formula that says negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay, a being the coefficient in front of the squared term, b in front of s, and then uh, c is just this term right here. So plugging values in, this would be negative one-third plus or minus the square root of 1 over 9 minus 4 times a is 1 and c is also 1. This is going to be negative 1 third plus or minus the square root of negative 35 
over 9 all divided by 2 and finally negative 1 third plus or minus the square root of negative 3.8 okay and then the square this square root equates to 1.97 so we're left with I right because we had a negative number under the square root and then all of that still divided by 2 and finally we will get s is equal to negative one sixth plus or minus point nine eight six i so now we have s and s is equal to a complex number and when s is equal to a complex number the format of the solution for a differential equation will look like this a 1 just some constant times e to the whatever this number is right, so negative 1 6 times t times cosine of this number 0.986 t plus a2 just another constant e to the negative 1 6 t times sine 0.986 t so we almost have the solution, but now we have to solve for these constants, right? What's a1 and a2? And this is why we solved for the initial conditions in the very beginning, is if we know what the voltage is at a certain period in time, we can plug it into our equation and then solve for these constants. So we said V at 0 plus is equal to zero volts right so zero is going to equal this equation where time is equal to zero now if we plug in t equals zero this term will go to zero and e to the zero equals one right so this just becomes a big one same thing for over here All right, and then when we plug in zero over here, we get cosine of zero. Cosine of zero equals one. All right, so this just goes to one. And then over here, we get sine of zero. All right, and sine of zero just goes to zero. All right, so this entire expression goes away because anything times zero is zero. So we just found out that zero is equal to a1 and we got one of our constants now we still have to find this a2 and the way we do that is by taking the derivative because we do know what dv on dt is All right so dv on dt at time 0 plus this was equal to negative 1 Alright, so now we need to take the derivative of this entire expression and it doesn't turn out to be that bad because things things simplify and go away so when we take the derivative of this equation we know that the only terms that are going to survive are the ones that have a cosine in them and on top of that we know that a1 is 0 so any term with a1 is going to go to 0. So we can basically disregard this half. And to solve this, you use the product rule, which says the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. right? And that, that will be two terms 
that'll both give us uh, a2 in them except one of them is going to have a sign term right and we do not want the sign term because when we plug in 0 it's just going to go away so really this just simplifies to one expression so negative 1 will equal a2 e to the negative 1 sixth times the derivative of this sign term will be 0.986 cosine of 0.986t. Okay, so now when we plug in t, this will become 0. Cosine of 0 just goes to 1. All right, there's also, missed the T over here, there's a T right there. This also goes to 0. E to the 0 equals 1. All right, so now, negative 1 equals 0.986A2. Or, A2 will equal negative 1 over 0.986, which equals negative 1.01. Okay, so now we have a1 and a2 and our expression. So a1 we said was 0, so we don't have to include that. a2 is negative 1.01 e to the negative one-sixth t sine point nine eight six t and that is our final answer it says v of t okay so finally we are done I'm sorry that this is a long example, but I hope you guys learned a lot and uh, fully understand where all the numbers are coming from because it shouldn't be a mystery where we're just plugging and chugging equations and we don't understand where things come from. Uh, it all comes from basic math uh, and differential equations. So thanks for watching and that's all.